Welcome to Admissions and 15 Adventures. The stage was set. The gauntlet thrown. Inform Telly Savalas as well as Gabe Kaplan that Robert Conrad challenges them to a rematch. We lost the competition last November on a bum decision, and I want a fair shot this time. Well, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to accept that challenge. Being a Greek and have a, having a heritage to protect, I'm going to bring my same romantic, affectionate nature. Naturally, my sense of competition will be there. Bob Conrad, you're not going to walk away with nickel one, baby. Bob, Kelly, up your noses with rubber hoses. And in your ear with a bottle of beer, Kaplan. They came once again. My jet and limousine has befitted their station. Girding for battle. To hurl themselves against one another in mortal combat. All lusting for victory at any cost. And when they met, it was called the Challenge of the Network Star. The Challenge of the Network Stars is a unique television event, a competition involving 30 of the top stars of the three major networks, but they are not representing the networks, they are representing themselves only. You will also meet them, not just in action, but up, close and personal. A lot of money involved. $350,000 in prize money, and each member of the team winning the competition receives $20,000. This is the challenge of the Network Star. Tonight, the stars leave the ratings race to challenge each other face to face. Francisco, Richard Hack, Streets of San Francisco, Ron Howard, Happy Days, Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, Welcome Back Carter, Hal Linden, Barney Miller, Penny Marshall, Laverne and Shirley, Christy McNichol, Family, Jacqueline Smith, Charlie's Angels. CBS, their captain, Kelly Savalas, Kojak, Sonny Bono, Sonny and Shep, Kevin Dobson, Kojak, Mike Farrell, Mash, David Crow, Rhoda, Linda Lavin, Alice, Lee Merriweather, Barnaby Jones, Rob Reiner, all in the family, Loretta Swift, Mash. Marsha Wallace, Bob Newhart, go. <laughs> Leading the stars from shows on NBC, their captain, Robert Codrat, Bob Bob Black Sheep, Elizabeth Allen, CPO Sharky, Carl Franklin, Fantastic Journey, Linda Day George, Once an Eagle, Karen Grassley, Little House on the Prairie, Dan Haggerty, Grizzly Adams, Art Pendle, Kingston Confidential, Kurt Russell, Wonderful World of Disney, Jane Seymour, 7th Avenue, W.K. Stratton, Baba Blacksheep. 
The challenge of the network stars is being brought to you by the 1977 Buicks automobiles dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. The competition is being held on the exquisite campus of Pepperdine University, set in the mountains overlooking Malibu Beach. There will be nine events in this competition. The winning team in each event gets 100 points. The second place is 75. They also ran gets 50. Working with me today, oh, Jay Simpson, the great star of the Buffalo Bill, and the gold medal winner in the decathlon at Montreal, Bruce Jim. I'm Howard Cosell, your host. Stay with us. is in the forefront. Together they combine to form a majestic setting for the Pepperdine University campus site of the challenge of the network stars. What a fine crowd we've got on hand here today for our first event. Working with me is the Olympic gold medal winner in the decathlon, Bruce Jenner. Earlier on, some of the competitors were trying out their wares in the water, not too successfully. Look at the absurd stroke of Hal Linden. And Bruce Jenner, they're all going to have difficulties, but specify what difficulties do you foresee for them? Well, I think the difficult part is going to be the exchange at the end. Uh, they only have one kayak per team. And so the competitor has to get out and the other competitor back into the boat at the, each end. So it should be interesting. Okay, Bruce, let's pick up with the lane introductions. Leading off of the team of stars on NBC shows the unbending captain of the Battle of the Network stars, Robert Conrad, Baba Blackshee, and lovely Jane Seymour. Pretty as you'd want to see, seventh athlete. Good athlete here, Art Hank Hinder, Kingston, and and Big Dan Haggerty, Grizzly Adams, with a body like a bear. For the team of stars, for the team of stars it shows on ABC, young Christy McNichol, family, her show. She's only 14, but a whale of a little athlete. Joining her, <laughs> Barney Miller. Al Linden, he of the absurd stroke. Larry Hilton Jacobs is aboard. Welcome back, Potter. He plays Washington. And finally, Richard Hatch, the all-around athlete of streets of San Francisco. Moving on quickly to the scene of stars on CBS shows, Marshall Wallace who's a little concerned because Bob Newhart says he may be leaving television next year. Then Mike Farrell of MASH. And Kevin Dobson, the great all-around athlete, Kojak's underling. Finally, the rugged body of Sonny Bono. But hey, here's the team captain, Telly Savalas. Telly, we're about to begin what is obviously a key event, but an event fraught with danger. Is this why you've elected not to participate? <laughs> That's true. I'm afraid of the water, how it is, you know. <laughs> now we're saving the best for last. All right, Telly, we'll catch your futility later on in the competition. But now, we're about ready for the start of the kayak relay. Christy McNichol, all 14 years of a poised and ready. She's going against Robert Conrad, Marsha Wallace. Gets off to a good start. Ahead of Conrad, building up a lead early on. And Bruce Jenner, how do you like Christy's stroke? Boy, she's looking awful good. You know, she's able to move those roll oars very, very fast. She's able to keep that boat going in a straight line. Also, Marsha Wallace got off the line very well. But, but look at Marsha <laughs> Wallace now, Bruce. He's in terrible trouble. Christy again with the lead over Robert Conrad. She's only 75 pounds and she holds together. Marsha Wallace going into Christie's lane. Marsha Wallace shouldn't worry about Newhart. She should worry about saving her life. Christie McNichol beats Robert Conrad. Quickly, Hal Linden gets in. Not too gracefully, but quickly, Linden has the lead over Jean Seymour. But the little importation from England is herself a good athlete. And watch her go. She's catching up to Hal Linden. This is a good struggle. Meanwhile, Marsha Marsha Wallace has just gotten to the end of her lap. Mike Farrell gets in again clumsily, and the team of stars from CBS shows his way out of it. It's now between Gene Seymour and look at Penny Marshall and Ron Howard cheering on Hal Linden. They're the team of stars on ABC shows. And Hal Linden comes in ahead of Gene Seymour. Now, let's look at Larry Hilton Jacobs coming in for Linden and Art Hindle coming in for Jane Seymour. 
Larry Hilton Jenkins giving off well at the moment. Oh, no. Turning around now. Losing control of the kayak. But Hindle, a good athlete, now moving on. CBS, a forlorn last. They're all but dead in this event, Bruce. But look at Hindle. Gaining on Larry Hilton Jenkins. <laughs> this is absurd. Watch Kevin Dobson now. This is an average footballer, Bruce. <laughs> and the team of stars on CBS shows well out of things. They have died. <laughs> but look at Hindle. Hilton Jacobs moves into the Hindle lane. Hilton Jacobs is really losing for the team of stars on ABC shows. And now Hindle giving the lead. Hindle the key man to Dan Haggerty, Grizzly Adams. Look at him go, Bruce. He's an outdoorsman, and they're on the ankle lap as Richard Hatch goes in. Richard Hatch, a good athlete, too. But Haggerty now way in the lead, Bruce. Haggerty is out there. He's got an easy win, looks like, here, because I don't think Richard Hatch is going to be able to pick up the lead. But, but, but he's doing awfully well. Here's the, the start. Everybody's cheering him Jenny on. Jenny Seymour is really having a book. She never engaged in this kind of activity before in her life. But today, she is having fun. And the team of stars from NBC shows wins the first event, the kayak relay, and the arms uplifted in victory by Dan Haggerty. Richard Hatch coming in. And so the stars on shows on ABC finish second. But look at this. Sunny Bono steadfastly pursuing the futility. Right now, let's talk to the key man on Hindle. Out of all the people out there, you were the one who looked like you really knew what you were doing. Have you had previous kayak experience? Well, I used to live with an Eskimo. No, uh, I'm, uh, I'm originally from Canada, and uh, it's one of our sports up there. Okay, Art, thank you very much. Hey, look at Sonny Bono. Neither rain, nor hail, nor sleep, nor snow will stay this warrior from completing his appointed round. Sonny Bono, what a great guy. Sonny and Cher together, one of the fine combinations in show business history. Maybe a little bit like Abbott and Costello, Martin and Lewis, or even Burns and Allen. They got married back in 1964. Success as a team was almost immediate. They have had five gold records together. And then, of course, the hit show, Sonny and Cher. During their marriage, a daughter named Chastity. But then, domestic discord, the decline of the marriage, divorce, the breakup of the show, each getting a show on his and her own, neither really making it. Then back together again for a good run, and they'll be touring together in March. I'll tell you, Sonny Bono is a fellow to reckon with, an understanding and very human guy. be married anymore but when these two are on stage together no couple ever seems to be more together a lot of people ask you know uh whether you sit there and you're still in love with that person and whether because of that love uh it's emotionally hard on you but you can't go into it unless you're over that relationship and Cher, Cher and I are over the lover relationship I, I uh, have feelings for her like a sister but I don't have that romantic feeling toward her anymore, so I can accept her from a different angle, and she accepts me from a different prospect. So it's, it's brand new, although it doesn't seem it, it's brand new for us. How has it been for Chastity, sitting right there, watching this whole evolution of her parents? Well, she was raised in show business, and she understands it uh, very well. And so I don't think it's as complicated for her as it would be for parents who the father went to work eight hours a day, came home, and there was a real set format for the child. Chastity's been on the road with us since she was born. And uh, she, she seems to handle it fine. And I think if you love the child, and she gets it from both parents, she feels secure.
Another secure girl, 14-year-old Christy McNichol, who led Gabe Kaplan's team to a second-place finish in the kayak relay. So the score after the end of the first event, Robert Conrad's team 100 points, Gabe Kaplan's team 75 points, Savalas' team 50 points. We'll be back with the baseball throw. Baseball throw combines a touch of the carnival with precision throwing. The rules are simple. Hit that target, you get a point automatic. Hit that target hard enough to dislodge the man in the cage and send him into the water tank, you get three points. But in the battle of the network stars last November, nobody could do it. Robert Conrad right there is with me now. Remember, Robert, nobody could do it. Never. And it was hit very hard by Kevin Dobson. I'll never forget it. It didn't move. I didn't move. Even the slim J.J. Walker That's hit it. That's true. But Dobson throws a very hard ball, and it cannot be moved. That's the problem with it. Nobody went in. The whole of the competition the last time around, remember? Maybe no one was strong enough. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It is not that hard, Robert to dislodge the man in the tank, to dump him right into the water. I will prove it right now, because my youthful colleague, Bruce Jenner, is in that tank. No of course, way, the world's Howard. greatest athlete. No. You really understand. No way, Howard. That's why I agreed to this. I knew you couldn't hit it. You can't hit the broad side of a barn. I couldn't, huh? Oh, no, you can't hit that thing. Just watch. Only one Just throw, though. Wait a second. Up. You'll never hit it. Uh-huh. Goodbye, my friend. No. You're not Mark Spitz. You've had your last hurrah. You can't swim. <laughs> I must shake your hand on that one, Howard. I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> All right, on with the baseball throw. You should retire now because it's the greatest thing you ever did in your life. <laughs> fun is fun, but Al Linden is going to find perhaps that this is not so much fun. Al Linden of Barney Miller. And the stars of shows on NBC go first, Gene Seymour, the first to throw. Oh. Nope. Oh. Gene Seymour, who couldn't connect in her job. Big raw for Big Dan Haggerty. I want the English one again. Uh oh! Did you see that? That looked like it hit the bar instead of the target. It was enough to send Linden into the water, of course. But there might be some controversy about that because he did not seem to hit the target. Nonetheless, he's taking his bows, and why not? Linden already wet. Are you sure this is the way Lloyd Bridges got started? I would just like to remind you, sir, that you may end up in the 12th precinct one of these days. An allusion, of course, to where Barney Miller's hangout is. Now let's look at this in slow motion. Remember I suggested that... No, it did not hit the target. We'll have to get a ruling on that later from Commissioner Rafer Johnson. No question about that one. Square head of the target. <laughs> That's Loretta Sweat of Mash, of course. My mother always told me cleanliness was next to garbage. <laughs> Last year, I 
I wasn't in this event. You're going to be in it this time. Robert Conrad is relentless. Hey, hey, that's enough, Bobby. That's enough. I'll take it. They can't touch you. They can't touch you, baby. Just lay it right in there. All right. Row number two. Down again goes Al Linden. He knows what it is to get dunked, not once, but often. He's an exceptional man and an exceptional actor. In 1971, for his performance in The Rothschilds, he won a Tony. But he knows what failure is, too. He's had his ups and downs. He expresses as well. Having gone through it, to, to the depths that I went through it, and having risen above those depths, uh, one develops a kind of inner security. As if I, I've been unemployed. I'm some of my best friends I made on the uh, unemployment line on 91st Street in New York. Uh, you know, we used to go every Thursday morning, walk our dogs together. Sure, I've been through it, uh, but and it's the thing that says to you, forget it, give up, and do something where you'll know there's a check coming in every week. But then one day you wake up in the middle of the night and you look at yourself and you say, you know, I know my business. I know what I'm doing. I have a product that is unique and when you get that kind of inner security then you don't worry about somebody ringing you on the phone because you know it'll happen and um, it does what you have to worry about right now al is this fellow kurt russell the former pro baseball player because he's got some arm look at that square hit down goes linden and the people who are stars of shows on nbc are really loving it with a performance like that, Hal, it's lucky I have my own series. <laughs> hey, Pagoda, star of fish. <laughs> Again. By this time, it's Lyndon who must feel like Mark Spitz. But he takes it all with great good grace. He really does. Hey, friend, now that the team of stars whose shows appear on the NBC network have completed their throwing, I understand that you have made a ruling with regard to Dan Hackett. Yes, the first uh, ball that uh, Dan threw that uh, dunked Hal Linden was uh, definitely down the bar about three or four inches, so he did not hit the target. In other words, then the three points originally accorded to him are now disallowed. Right. So much for that. Now Dan Agony of Grizzly Adams is in the cage. Marsha Wallace. Watch this. She is funny. And so is he. throw is really a fun competition. Fire it in there, honey. Nope. That encourages Haggerty. <laughs> no luck for Marshall. Haggerty grows secure. <laughs> no, no, no! Well, he's got to worry about this guy. Wild pitch. Remember, Kevin was once offered a pro contract. Good hit! In goes Haggerty. He almost displaces the entire tank. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the baseball competition in just one moment. Way to go! Simpson, Bruce Jenner, the challenge of the network stars, and Rob Reiner aiming to get Dan Haggerty. But no, Rob misses. Haggerty loves it. <laughs> As for Reiner, well, fantastic evidence yes. of futility for yes. a man who was a professional pitcher. Professional pitcher, and now professional cretin. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm so sorry about oh, that. Oh, so well, listen. In all these people. Got them all tied up. <laughs> and Haggerty, hey, look at him over ball. there. Go ahead, take another ball. <laughs> That's it. That's it.
Congratulations, John. That's it. Reiner did it in the long run. One looks at that burly body of Dan Hackney's and doesn't remotely suspect that he has encased within him the kind of sweetness and sensitivity that he truly possesses. He truly is Grizzly Adams, off the screen as well as on. He has spent most of his life living with and training animals loving them. He was married at the tender age of 17 with two children. That's my boy. That's a good boy. <laughs> flying up in the air and she's kind of my ballast she holds me on the ground and it's been good for both of us and my kids uh this is great for my family I meet a lot of beautiful people and uh i just feel very lucky to be out here and i'm grateful for my kids as they can grow up and meet a lot of nice people in this kind of atmosphere where the divorce rate is colossally high what is the secret to holding a marriage together especially when you began at such a tender age uh, I think that's the secret. If you're going to go into anything, you might as well go into it full force and see it through. And there's no way that you're ever going to marry somebody and live with them and not bang heads back and forth. And uh, I think if we both give one way and she gives the other way, I think that we do real fine. And she's a beautiful woman. She's been awful good to me. And uh, I couldn't do any better. I can't speak for anybody else, but I think if you just put your teeth into it and write it out, I think everybody would do a lot better. Mike Farrell is now in the tank. Now up comes an all-around athlete, Richard Hatch, southpaw thrower. Another one of those with a real good arm. As you can see, good all-around athlete. Good hit. Down he goes. One out of two for Hatch. Ronnie Howard, another good thrower. Happy days. Kid, you know. Be nice. <laughs> he hit, but that's weird. That time, he didn't hit it on enough to down him. So it's one point, not three. No question about that one. Ronnie Howard did the job. And look at Ronnie Howard's parents. They are really thrilled at Ronnie's performance. Why not? But in the baseball competition, the stars from NBC won it, 12 points. The stars from ABC, 7 points. The stars from CBS, 3 points. And the stars from NBC won it with throws like that by Kurt Russell. The current team standings, Conrad's team, 200. Kaplan's 150. Savalas, 100. Coming up, golf. volleyball competition held earlier it came down to the championship game and Conrad's team against Kaplan's team. The quality of play throughout the volleyball competition was astonishingly good. Sonny Bono in particular all over the place with flailing arms and diving saves. But the
the play was featured by long and spirited rallies and by frequent spikings. Everybody among the spectators was surprised. Lyndon got hit on the head from time to time, but even he enjoyed that. In the ultimate, though, Conrad's team prevailed. And so, for the third consecutive event, the team of Robert Conrad was the winner, and if it's not to be a runaway, the other teams must start winning. Now we're ready for the golf competition. We have a 60-yard hole here. Closest man, closest woman to the hole. Put their totals together. You've got the winning team. Penny Marshall, team of stars of ABC shows at the team. Penny, a good athlete. Don't embarrass the family. <laughs> Rob Reiner, Penny Marshall's husband, with the words, don't embarrass the family. She did not with that shot, Penny Marshall gets off a very, very good shot. Measurement coming up, and in the meantime, let's have a quick word with Rob. Your reaction quickly, Rob, to what you just saw of your wife's golfing style. <laughs> Penny's distance, by the way, from the hole, 13 feet 2 inches. Now, lovely Jane Seymour of 7th Avenue. Fix the hair, Janie. She never held a golf club in her life until today. Let's see how she can do. Looking down toward the hole. Keep that head down. Keep that left arm stiff, Janie. No. Unbelievable low. Look at the elation written all over Janie Seymour's face. A marvelous shot. And the measurement shows the distance from the hole. Five feet five. That's the best yet. Janie Seymour doing it. Lee Merriweather, now up for Telly Savalas. Lee, a good athlete too, like Penny Marshall. Lee, who's played some golf in her time. Note that stance. See how stiff that left arm is? A beauty. A beauty. This is the way, really, to play this hole when you're seeking to get close to it. Roll it up to the hole. Captain Savalas liked it too. No question about it. And Lee Merriweather's distance, eight feet, three inches. So the girls are doing very well in the golf competition. But the one who did the best was this beautiful girl, Jane Seymour of 7th Avenue, Captains and the Kings. Jane Seymour, a familiar face in Britain. Not really yet in the United States. Why in Britain? Well, that's where she comes from. At the age of two, she was studying ballet. She has appeared with the renowned Kirov Ballet. And indeed, her goal in life was to become a ballerina. But a knee injury changed all that. And she turned to classical drama, Shakespeare, and so on. She is a remarkably graceful woman. She is a remarkably sensitive woman. She remains unmarried, but that can't last for too much longer. Not with that face. Anyway, now it's America. And so I asked her how she got into the film business. I came to Hollywood four and a half years ago. A film company brought me out to, they were hoping to put me in a film playing an American girl. And they trained me to speak with an American accent and it didn't work out. And I, I had always sort of had a feeling that I'd end up here one day because I love working here and I love the country. And I um, did a special called King David, which was shown last Easter and was promoting it. And while I was out here, a lot of people in the business said they thought I would do very well out here. And I came out with one suitcase, $500, which is all the British government would allow me for a six-week vacation, and um, a visitor's visa. And I uh, came and uh, loved it so much, started working and stayed. She continues to study ballet as he at Stephen Lynch Ballet School. I asked her if there was a correlation between dancing and acting. Firstly, it's enormous self-discipline to become an act uh, to become a dancer, and it's the one thing that I think is lacking for a lot of actors. They don't seem to feel this need. Um, the most important thing I noticed when I started was that a lot of actors can't walk or run normally or naturally, and um, they find it difficult to move. And uh, in film, especially, there's this. It's a great need to be able to have grace when you move and, and to run and walk and do things naturally. The things that people don't think about. You know, just normal things. I don't like to think about Sonny Bono's socks, not after looking at lovely Jean Seymour. But that's Sonny at the tee. The golf competition. 
And Sonny has a good stance. Nice, easy swing. Good loft to the ball. And marvelous shot for Sonny Bono as the team of stars at CBS shows shows its elation. Marvelous shot for Sonny. Let's look at it again. Nice, easy loft and no great roll to the ball, which was the key to the excellence of the shot. The actual distance on Sonny's shot, four feet six inches, the best shot of the competition thus far. Sonny, I don't blame you a bit. And that puts Savala's team ahead of Kaplan's team in the golf competition since Richard Hatch went to the and four inches. And now, coming up for Conrad's team is Dan Hackett. Now this is Bear Susie cheering him on. Susie can be found everywhere that Dan Hackett is. Dan, looking up toward the hole now, keeps that hit down, Dan. Again, that low roll up to the pin shot, the kind of style Lee Merriweather used. And a marvelous shot for Dan Hackett. Simply marvelous. The distance, six feet, two inches. He's embraced by Captain Conrad. And that six feet, two inches gives Conrad's team the victory in the golfing competition. The total combined distance, 11 feet, seven inches for Jane Seymour and Dan Hackett. So Conrad's team does it again, and with the exciting running relay coming up, we're in danger of a rout here, because four straight events have been won by Conrad's team, and they are building up a compelling lead. Team scores are Conrad, 400, Zavala, 225, Kaplan, 275. glorious view. It's the Pepperdine University campus set high above Malibu Beach. The view from our Goodyear Blimp. And we're coming up to the running relay competition. How it goes all along with O.J. Simpson and Bruce Jenner report. The running relay. And what a start those stars from NBC have gotten off to. They're working right now to prepare for this event, the prior four events. They've been the winners every single time. Quickly, the rules. Four legs of 110 yards each, two legs of 220 yards each. And watching them work out here with O.J. Simpson, I'm wondering, Juice, which ones, if any, impressed you? Well, there's one I know can run, and that's LeVar Burton. You know, we're down there filming Ruth. I had a little segment, and the director told me, hey, when he gets 20 yards down there, you catch him before he gets to this tree, which is about another 100 yards down. So I said, okay. So I went chasing him, and when we got to that tree, I was about 40 yards behind him. So we shot it again, and I was about 50 yards yards behind him then i got sick <laughs> you know i could never catch him finally they told him to act not run and i was able to catch him so i know he can run i don't know if you still can run oj let's take up with the introductions now of the contestants running the first 110 yard length for the team of stars from abc penny marshall of laverne and shirley and she's a limbo last juice yes she looks like she can do some run this little lady looks like she can run she's run away from a lot of advances i'm sure jacqueline smith of Jolly's Angel. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs of Welcome Back Cotta, a long-legged guy with an excellent stride. He'll be running 220 yards. We'll have to check his stamina, Duke. As for Kaplan, well, he can run. He proved that in the battle of the network score. Richard Hatch is a good athlete, too. Yes, and here's the guy, as I said, he's got to cook me down in uh, Georgia last year for roots, and uh, he may be the ace in the hole. Well, stamina will be the question there because he's got the anchor 220 yard leg. Now, the team of stars from CBS show, Mike Farrell, running against Penny Marshall, Juice, man against the lady. Yeah, that's unusual, but I think Penny's in good shape. She can have <laughs> Loretta Swift, running 110 yards. And then running 220 yards, David Grow of Rhoda. Linda Lavin of Alice, back at the 110-yard leg. Rob Reiner, I'm glad he doesn't have to run against his wife, Penny Marshall, too. I tell you, he's a pretty good athlete. I would have played some tennis with him. He moves around pretty good. No question about Kevin Dobson as an athlete. No question at all. That's his little daughter with him. Now, the team that has won the first four events, the stars from NBC. Paul Franklin running the first 110-yard leg. 
And Benny Marshall must go against him too, just. Yeah, but he has a bum knee, you know. You heard it in that old series he was doing for Reed. You heard it on a coconut of all things. Danny Seymour running the second leg, and then Dan Haggerty at 220 yards. We know about Karen Grassley. She's a long strider, too. Kurt Russell, who is a fine athlete, and, of course, W.K. Strat. Quickly, with the running relay about to begin, how come that you, Captain Conrad, are not running for your team? Well, the, my team made a protest against its captain. They told me that if I couldn't beat Gabe Kaplan, I couldn't beat anybody. <laughs> I think your team is right. Because this is the way it was in the Battle of the Network Stars last November. Remember, after the stars of NBC had won the parent victory in the running relay, Savalas and Kaplan lodged protests, and then there was this runoff. And Kaplan, unexpectedly, to the surprise of everybody, pouring it on down the stretch. That's the way it was then. And this team of stars from NBC this time, so unsurpassing up till now. Well, what do you think of them, Telly Savalas? Well, I, there's no levity here. I'm serious, Howard. Right. You know, I'm looking for a recognizable face on the NBC team. For Mr. Conrad to say, well, the best man's going to run. I've got Bruce Jenner, O.J. Simpson. They're friends of mine. They're not running in the race. I suggest you put them on. You're going to need them. Uh, I agree, <laughs> because you brought an Olympic team. All I did was brought what the show suggested. Stars of a series. And on the NBC team right now, although very competent actors, I don't know who they are. They may be the Olympic team for 1980, for all I know. <laughs> if, if I may say this to Mr. Savalas, after this race, you'll know who they are. Well, we'll find out about that. And Telly, you well know that Conrad didn't select the members of his team, neither did the NBC Network. The team was selected by the organizers of the competition. But what I keep thinking about, Juice, is Penny Marshall must run against two men, so... Changed it. Penny, what are they trying to do to you? Putting you against Mike Farrell and Carl Franklin? I don't know. Time. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> uh, and it, uh, it's a strategy play. They're saying I'll lose, and uh, but they'll have to run against uh, their girls later. So. You think you can stay close? Oh, yeah. No question. No question. Inferior man. <laughs> no, I just hope not to fall. <laughs> it's my main objective. Okay, Penny, good luck to you. And that's Carl Franklin. He of the bad knee, as described by O.J. Simpson. They're off the first leg, too. Quickly out in front is Carl Franklin. And on the inside lane, Penny Marshall trying to hang in there. And she's holding together very well, Juice, against Mike Farrell as they come to the end of the first lap. The exchanges are made successfully. And look at Jackie Smith, Juice. She's burning up the track, Darwin. That's he is burning up the track. Penny got an excellent start, and Jacqueline has given him a great lead here. They're going to need it. Now the exchange. Let's watch. Jacqueline Smith in the lead. Hands off to Lawrence Elton Jacobs. Remember, Juice, this is the first 220-yard leg. Well, I got one of my brothers running. I think he's going to hold the lead. Marvelous stride. The question here will be stamina because Haggerty in second place is a good athlete. And he's running strongly, closing in on Hill. But Hill's hanging in there, making the mistake, Juice, of looking back. But there at the fire gesture. And he holds the and this exchange is not so successful. Right there on the ground is Dan Haggard. This is Gabe Kaplan in the lead. And this is where the strategy of having Penny Marshall against two men pays off. Because Kaplan could build up the lead against Karen Grassley. Each team must have two women competitors. Now Kurt Russell trying to pour it on. He's chasing Richard Hatch. Hatch himself a strong runner out there. And now the exchange for the final leg to LeVar Burton Juice. Yeah, LeVar, I think LeVar got it made here, but WK is a pretty good sprinter. I think he runs about a 10, 500 yard dash. I think Robert Conrad may have been wrong. It looks like they don't need Bruce Jenner or OJ Simpson. <laughs> looks that way now, but LeVar is beginning to tie up. Stratton's closing the gap. LeVar looking back. Another mistake. But he's got enough left as Stratton begins to tie up. So the team of stars from ABC shows wins in the running relay. They stay alive by the victory in the overall competition. And Kevin Dobson finishes a distant last, but still gets encouragement from his captain, Telly Savalas. And Rob Reiner gets encouragement from his wife, Penny Marshall. Seems to be limping a little. Whoop 
Giving it up. LeBob Burton, and why not? He was the anchor man. But the little lady who turned the tide for Kaplan's team, it seems to me, was this one, Jacqueline Smith. Take over, Juice. For anyone who's ever watched Charlie's Angels, it's no surprise that Jacqueline Smith keeps herself in excellent shape. But in the condition to run a relay leg like this, hey, Howard, that's a surprise to me. <laughs> oh, boy, what a long, loose stride. And as she passes off to Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, she has done her thing. Let's talk with her. Jackie, baby, you won that race. Oh, I did. With a blue team, you really pulled it on. You're a track star in Texas yeah, or something? No, no, maybe the 60-yard dash. And I <laughs> Jackie Smith, explosive new star of Charlie's Angels. I wondered if she wore anything like the roles she portrays. I'm not like the character in Charlie's Angels at all. My lifestyle away from work is very conservative and very quiet. And I'd say I'm really an old-fashioned girl with old-fashioned values. And I love staying at home. I'm not into a Hollywood lifestyle of parties and uh, discotheque and that sort of thing. I truly like just staying at home. You know, I've been doing my house over. And one of my hobbies is decorating, so I've been restoring my house to an 18th century colonial, really an authentic colonial. So I've been working on that in my spare time. Juice mentioned that Jackie's in terrific shape. This is one reason. Dance and yoga classes one day a week. That's all the time she has for them. One thing about it, she hasn't changed. She talks about her closeness to her family. My family is very important to me. I think they live in Houston. I talk to them every single day. And I used to go home once a month because I, I always would go to see my grandfather. But now they come here. And I think they're going to live here maybe six months of the year. So the balance of, of their lifestyle and the devotion and love. I mean, they're always there and always behind me. And it's the sort of thing where if something's upsetting, I can really call them and say something. And they give me an answer and everything's all right. And I believe it. You know, it's a terrific, it's, it's the greatest thing. I mean, everybody's going to a psychiatrist today or this or that. Or they're into all these different uh uh, things, which is fine, but I just call my parents and they give me the best answer in the world and it always works. Well, it sure worked for your team, Jackie, what you had to deliver. And as we look at the race again, you hand it off to Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. He held and even increased the lead you gave him, but in his pass off to Gabe Kaplan, it was not really precise, yet Gabe himself was helped by the imprecision and the baton exchange between Karen Grassley and Dan Haggard. In the ultimate, the man who held together and saved the victory for Kaplan's team was LeVar Burton, and it was a must-win situation for Gabe Kaplan's team. We've got the obstacle course event coming up next. In the meantime, after five events, Kaplan's team, 375, Conrad's team, 475, Savalas' team, 275. That's the team stand. Los Angeles Center, it did not deter the stars from NBC in the swimming competition. They won it, and Kaplan's team finished second. Once again, Savalas' team was third. But there was no smog at Pepperdine University. The sun grows brighter, the day grows hotter, fatigue begins to overtake the competitors, but right now the fatigue must be forgotten because before them all, the most testing challenge we have in the challenge of the network stars, the obstacle course. And to show you the nature of the challenge ahead of each and every one of them, two of the world's greatest athletes will demonstrate the course. Number 32, O.J. Simpson, Buffalo Bills, and of course, the gold medal winner in the most grueling competition known to humankind, the Olympic decathlon. Bruce Jenner. And I must say the fans are really excited about this because after all, two of the extraordinary athletes of our time. Simpson preparing for this demonstration by running through all the airports of the world. Jenner preparing for it by making more appearances on the banquet circuit than any other athlete in the United States today. We're about ready for the start.
the gun, and they're off. Quickly, Janet gets an early lead. The juice, who should excel on the ties, actually can't work them, can't work the bars either. What a laughable display. Now look at the juice, slipping down the wall, trying to go up. Jenna can't connect at all. Jenna comes over, lands in the dirt. The juice in the lead, but he can't negotiate the punt. Neither can Jenna. And Jenna winds up getting soaked, the two of them, in a near dead heat, coming right up to the finish. Come here, come here. Come here. Oh, come on. I've seen Great it all. I've seen it. I think it. I won, but I didn't do that. I don't know who won. Thing? What it was was an almost magical exercise in ineptitude. I remember when Ethel Kennedy beat Bruce in tennis. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe this. What's wrong with each of you? <laughs> you know, I'm glad I have that gold medal in my pocket because this is a terrible display of athletic ability. You know, I've been watching these obstacle courses for a long time, and I've always wanted to run one, and now I have, and boy, I know it's harder than it looks. Okay, Bruce, what's your version, Juice? Oh, Howard, I'm so mad you had that bolt of lightning with the baseball, and i got to listen to you forever. Hey, i like to race you in this obstacle course. All I can say, Juice, is stay away from Air Force. Right now, we're ready to begin the competition. And Marsha Wallace of the Bob Newhart Show against Janie Seymour of 7th Avenue. Waiting for the starter's gun. There it is. Off they go. Janie going under. Marsha slowed up. Janie has the lead going to the tires. Janie manipulates the tires very well. Marsha's a little trouble with them. Now to the bars. Now to the bars. And there goes Janie Seymour. That'll cost her points. That'll be a penalty. Janie gets to the wall first. Note the girls go over the shorter portion of the wall. The men over the taller portion. And they get up to the pond. And look at that. Marsha into the water. A penalty there. Janie Seymour comes down the apparent winner. But only apparent because penalty these will have cost her the race. Nonetheless, she's a good one to talk to, Bruce, and let me try to get over to her right now. Janie, congratulations. You made a great run for her. I don't know you fell on the ball. What happened? Yeah, I'm no monkey. Yeah. <laughs> really no monkey. Uh, yeah, I fell over. I haven't hurt my, myself, though, and that's the most important thing. No, and you've been very important to your team in the competition, going back particularly to your remarkable golf shot. This is the first time you've ever done an obstacle course. Eh? Absolutely. I've never done a sport in my life. I've never ridden a kayak, either. <laughs> but it's wonderful. I'm going to become a sportswoman now. <laughs> you want to do this ever again? Oh, yes. You do? Oh, yes. You're putting me on. Well, well I'm winning, aren't you? <laughs> well, Janie, I hope you keep winning. We're ready for our next two competitors, little Christy McNichol, the family against Slender Long, striding Karen Grassley, Little House on the Prairie. We're awaiting the starter's gun. There it is. And they're off. Bruce, look at Christy bust out of there. She gets a great start. You know, she's going low to the ground, and she's agile. She's able to just scamper right through all these. No trouble with the bars. A big lead over Karen already. Easily over the wall. Up to the pond. She's all alone. Perfectly handled. Streaking down an easy victory with the encouragement of Darlene Carr. All alone, as I said, she's the winner. Probably the best athlete in the whole competition. Do you realize oh. that? Karen is a tough opponent. You beat her going away. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I tried hard. She sure did try hard, Bruce. Why don't you take a look at her in action? Boy, this is why she has the best time in the competition so far. She's young, she's agile, she's able to go through that water jump with a lot of technique. Really, she's looking very good. Here in her running, she's not only is she out there working very hard, but she's having a lot of fun. She's Look got a big face. smile on her face, and she's just going to be taking all that momentum and going right through that tape. But the only trouble is right here, she doesn't have, she's only 75 pounds, not even enough strength to break the tape. I think you used the right word when you described her as happy because the expression in her face was exactly that, Bruce. This is a remarkable young girl. She began her career at age six, first doing commercials and then becoming a dramatic actress. She works on the 20th Century Fox lot. But every day, because she's only 14 by state law, she must interrupt her work to undertake schooling. And her school is in that trailer she just entered. It's there that she gets her teaching from a welfare worker, that too, according to state law, and she must have an adult guardian with her at all times. And as she discusses her studies with her teacher, she probably always has in the back of her mind her hero, Donnie Osmond. Let's listen. That. I had a chance, because my mother was working on the Lucy show at the time, so I had a chance to go and get his autograph for Kim. 
So I walked in the dressing room and I was getting, a, you know, I was going to get his autograph. And I walked in and he was sitting there and he had turned 16. He was like 15 and a half or 16, I can't remember. And he just changed. Those pictures were not him, I didn't think. So I was going, I couldn't believe it. I thought he was so cute and he was so adorable and he had a real deep voice, you know. It was changing. And from then on, I just loved him. I came home and I tore down my David Cassidy pictures and up went Donny Osmond. Coming up, Marshall. the next competitor, Tony Marshall of Laverne and Shirley, and take over, Juice. Lee, tell me now, what is a former Miss America doing here on the obstacle course? If you could find out why I'm here, I'd love to know. <laughs> I'm afraid America is going to find out in a few minutes. Oh, Johnny. Well, Christy has youth on her side. You have experience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about Good crack, Juice. Might have upset Leanne, though. This is a good athlete, Penny Marshall. We remember her from Battle of the Network Stars. Okay, the starting gun about to go off. Here we go. Set. Off they go. Penny quickly gets the lead. Penny Marshall in the lead, going to the tires, handling the tires well. Leanne with a little bit of struggle. Now to the bars. Penny over the bars. Leanne catching up. But now, quickly, Penny reestablishes a lead, goes cleanly over the wall, and now to the pond. Handles that, not without a little bit of difficulty. She's well ahead. Leanne first at the pond. She has great difficulty there. It's an easy victory for Penny Moss. Second straight year. This is your event, baby. Oh, no, Christy's much younger. <laughs> Let the little girl run again. I'll bet that's exactly the way Lee Merriweather feels about it, Bruce. Well, you know, Lee may have a lot of experience, but not in this obstacle course. You know, she goes through the water jump all right, and then as she starts driving for the tape, she slips. But you know how would I give her a lot of credit for being out there? It really takes a lot of guts. Yes, it does. She's a terrific woman anyway. She began her career as Miss America back in 1955. Broke in with a couple of Philco Playhouse dramas, written especially for her, and then a 14-month tour of duty as women's editor on Dave Garraway's Today Show. Let's get back to the competition. Kurt Russell for the man on Robert Conrad's team. Past professional ball player. And Sonny Bono who give anything a try. What a great sport this guy is. Kurt Russell taking the competition very seriously as does his mentor, Robert Conrad. Now we're about ready again for the starting gun here and keep a close eye on Kurt Russell. Sonny Bono too, for that matter. All right. Here we go. Look at Russell bust out of there on his stomach and slid right under the rope. Handle the tires easily. Sonny's already in trouble. And yet hanging in there. Russell with a good lead going over the wall. Russell making great time. Russell may win it, but look at Sonny hanging in there. Even to the pond with all of his difficulty. Russell, the winner, with the best time in the competition thus far. Even though Sonny Bono lost to Kurt Russell, you got to give him credit for getting more out of himself than he ever thought he had to give. Look at him in slow motion. Bruce? You know, Howard, what's the saying? If you've got their hearts and minds, their bodies will follow well. <laughs> it looks like Sonny's got the heart and the mind, but his body just doesn't seem to be following. <laughs> you'll be seeing right now this is a different kind of football three on three football each team has three players a quarterback two wide receivers offensively only one of the defenders can rush the quarterback and then only after a count of three successful pass into the end zone means five points those are the basics of the football competition robert conrad has already led his team a victory over Telly Savalas' team, and he did it with this kind of performance. He's not too tall, but he's got good hands, and he's a good receiver. And little Ronnie Howard will fool you, too. He led his team to victory over Telly Savalas' team, so his team will be going in the finals against Robert Conrad's team. Great catch. 
Ron Howard is an amazing fellow. He started acting at the age of two. I wonder how many of you remember him this way. I now pronounce you man. I know why they shouldn't be married. Well, what are you trying to do? I'm speaking now so I won't have to forever hold my peace. I'm not supposed to speak. Then why did he ask? Well, it's just part of the ceremony, O.P. You always say speak, but nobody ever does. Well, I'm gonna. <laughs> what did she have to marry him for, anyway? <laughs> Things is going real well. Things are going very well for Ron Howard oh, these days. He's the star of Happy Days, was a great success second. in the movie, American um, Graffiti. Right really now, you know, he is directing is his very first Mars, film. Because your parents are reacting this way. But I think that, uh, that with Paula, we need to get the feeling that she's really trying to make it work. You could argue back when he says that. Because that's kind of a nasty thing to say. He is but directing instead, this film for Roger kind of Corman. I've always enjoyed working with first-time directors. I can remember working with Francis Coppola and Peter Bogdanovich and Marty Scorsese. And I think there's a great stimulation in working with the director who's doing his first film. I think Ron will be as good or maybe even better than some of those men. Uh, very few people know it, but he took very high honors at the University of Southern California Film School. I saw his student film and I thought it was extraordinarily good. And the combination of his training in film and his work as an actor, I think, uh, equips him ideally to be a director. There's a great responsibility that a director has. Kind of total commitment to one project. And he lives or dies by what he does. As an actor, sometimes you can be doing a couple of jobs simultaneously. You come in for a week, maybe on a movie. You don't have that kind of commitment. Right now, the commitment has to be to the gridiron. Gabe Kaplan's team against the team of Robert Conrad. The finals, another must-win situation for Kaplan's team. Juice, which team do you like and why? Well, I got to give uh, Robert Conrad's team the edge. I think they have the better athletes. But I talked to Gabe right before this competition began. I think he has a real sound strategy. Look for him to run a lot of cross patterns. Look, at him, look for him trying to hit the underman, Howard. And I think they have sound strategy, and that strategy will see him through. I think the finals will be in the tug of war because I think Gabe Kaplan's team is going to win this competition. Okay, Juice. Each team has five offensive plays left. Conrad's team led at the quarterback position by W.K. Stratton, who's a good one. Tall has excellent downfield vision, doesn't lose his poise when rushed, and he's got a good arm. Right now, Haggerty and Franklin are his receivers. Okay, Stratton with the ball. And he can't be rushed until the count of three. Now Gabe Kaplan gets at him. Down goes the ball. Kaplan apparently touched him in bounds, but there is a protest going on. The official involved is none other than Jim Tunney, who is a key respected official in the National Football League. Conrad is burned up. Let's look at it again. In slow motion. As Stratton. Kaplan can't start to charge until a count of three. Now he does. Kaplan coming at him. Touches him apparently just in bounds as Stratton bumps into a photographer. So that's a look at the play in slow motion. The argument continues, and Jim Tunney has to render an official decision. Touched wow. W.K. before he hit the man there, and that pushed him into it. And that's why that didn't make any difference. We're going to get him off the field. I don't want him there either. But the defensive man got there first. That's why it's a point for the defense. So he was touched before, and that's was a point for Kaplan's team. Juice? Yeah, how it is a reason why he had no receiver to go through. It looked like they were trying to run a big play. They, I think the strategy was to get the defenders to run into each other, but uh, that's what happens when you miss the preseason. <laughs> you well know. Defense, touch the offense. Point for the defense. <laughs> All right, there are four offensive plays left for Conrad's team. Kaplan's team leading one to nothing after that controversial call. Stratton ready, back with the ball. Franklin and Haggerty going downfield. Kaplan trying to get to Stratton, too late. Great catch, good throw, great catch. LeVar Burton got there too late, and Carl Franklin scores five points for Conrad's team. Juice? Yeah, with Linda Day Jarrett there cheering, I'm sure he would drop the ball. Carl made a good move. He ran a simple out pattern. 
The bar came on him with a little too late. WK, I must admit, put that ball right on the money. He can fire the ball. A little bit of a huddle. Three offensive plays left, and Art Hindle is back. Remember, he got hurt in the obstacle course competition, but he's back, and he's just fine. Enjoying his team's present lead, five to one. Three plays left. Stratton again. Oh, a fine defensive play by Richard Hatch. Just a fine defensive play. Looked a little like Mike Haynes, the brilliant rookie with the New England Patriots. Congratulations are due him. Yeah, watch Richard A. He doesn't even hit the man. He plays the ball all the way. He comes up looking like Mike Haynes here. Played the ball all the way. No chance for passing it. Okay, two offensive plays left for Conrad's team. It's a must-win situation again for Kaplan's team. As we've explained, a compelling lead has been built up by Conrad's team. Two offensive plays left. Stratton back. Downfield. Oh, a beauty. Just a beauty to Kurt Russell. Stratton is really showing me something, too. Elizabeth Allen is obviously loving what's happening. That makes it 10 to 1. 10 to 1 for Conrad's team over Kaplan's team. Remember, Kaplan's team gets five offensive plays. This is the last offensive play for Conrad's team. Stratton downfield. What a catch! What a catch right there. Robert Conrad spiking the ball in true NFL fashion, too. He really is an athlete. And he is as tough a competitor as you would ever want to see. Yeah, let's take a look at that in slow motion. Robert Conrad is certainly one of the top athletes in television today. I can remember to the Olympics to watch the fights and he'd be at every boxing match there was and at one point he was talking about him going in, into professional boxing. You see him run a simple out, uh, WK puts the ball almost on the money, goes up, makes a great catch and does what every great receiver is taught to do. He got both feet in and Howard, that's a touchdown in any league. Well, let's get his reaction, Juice. What a superb catch. Thank great, you know, just yeah. great. Looked like Boletnikov at his best, Robert. Yeah, but you know what you got to do, don't you? Got to play defense. I mean, how many, how many times you catch it? They can catch it, too. Now we got to stop them, right? You understand? Whatever you say. Now I'm a linebacker. We're going. Congratulations. Our Goodyear blimp moves high above the Pepperdine University campus. Truly, it is one of the most beautiful campuses of any college in this nation. The president of the university is Dr. William Banowski. We're grateful for his hospitality and cordiality. But now, back to the scene of action. The gridiron gave Kaplan's team, trailing Robert Conrad's team, 15 to 1. They've got a long road to hold. There to come back. They've got five offensive plays. This is the first. Gabe Control. Look at little Darlene Carr. What a catch. She broke loose from Karen Grassley. Had the good hands. A great catch. Quickly they pulled to within 15 to 6 as Kaplan's team. And watching Kaplan in the warm-ups, he threw more to his women than he did to his men. That was showing us something, Juice. That's right, Howard. You know, in practice, he took a good look at Robert Conrad, W.K. Stratton, and Carl Franklin. I guess he decided he'd have a better chance against the women, and it certainly turned out to be sound strategy. You see, Darlene ran a simple cross pattern. Beautiful pass by Gabe right over the top. Darlene makes a great catch right in the hand. She had beat Peter Person, and I think you're going to see shades of elbow right coming up here. Maybe Billy White Shoes Johnson. But anyway, this means high hopes for Gabe Kaplan's team, Juice. Four offensive plays left. Gabe back there, poisonous. Trying the same strategy, Juice. I don't believe it. It worked again. Penny Marshall against Jamie Seymour. First, the ball in her hands. Then her knee. Then up to her face. Then her nose. Back to the hands. But she held it. And it's now 15 to 11. Kaplan's team trailing. But three offensive plays still left. How about that, Juice? Well, you know what? Coaches always say, if you find a good thing, stay with it, and they're staying with it. As you see, Penny comes off the ball. She doesn't do anything fancy. She does the same thing Darlene did to play before. She runs a simple cross pattern. Beat her first, and the ball was a little behind her. Hey, this is a great catch. You see the ball hit her knee, hit her head, back in her hands, on her head. Hey, she got the ball. That's a touchdown. 
It was more than a touchdown because it is producing, or at least leading to producing, a stirring climax in this competition. Three offensive plays left. Kaplan now whispering that we're talking to LeVar Burton. I don't think Burton understood what he told him, Juice. He certainly looked a little perplexed there. Okay, Penny Marshall again. Let's see if Kaplan adheres to the same strategy. Reiner is proud of his wife, Penny Marshall. He just made that clear. Pat Kaplan back again. Now he's looking toward Penny, then turns, throws to LeVar. But a brilliant defensive play by Carl Franklin. No interference. Immediately, Kaplan's team charged interference. Let's look again, Juice. Yeah, here it goes. And I'm surprised they stopped going to the women. Maybe Robert Conrad said stop hiding behind the women's skirts. Uh, he shouldn't have listened to him. He should have stayed with the women. Even though LeVar had his man beat. But that's a great play there. That, that looks like NFL action to me. Right. Really did. Carl got his hand up there just in time. 15 to 11, Conrad's team leading. Two offensive plays left. Once again, LeVar Burton ready to go out. Kaplan back with the ball. Let's see if he goes to Penny Marshall this time. That should be the strategy. That's what he does. Penny Marshall becomes the hero of the football competition. What should we say, heroin juice, in terms of winning? Live. All right, 16 to 15, Kaplan's team wins, and so we have coming before us the final event, the tug of war. The winner of that event will win the challenge of the network star. And you never saw a prouder, happier husband than Rob Reiner as he embraces Penny Marsh. What a beguiling couple. Let's visit with them. Yeah, 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 this is it, yeah. H hold on a second, let me just, one, one, one second, okay? Let me just see if Penny's, uh, uh, just a, Pe honey? Yeah. Honey, are you decent? Yeah. Uh, they're, they're here, the people are here. Oh, I was just cleaning up. Come on up. Yeah, c come on up. We're, we're just straightening up a little bit. You just, just find your way up. These two are an utterly madcap couple, each with a long family background in show business. Just come on, come on. Watch, you know, your watch your step. step. Yeah, be careful. Come on right up. Uh, this is it. This is where we live. This is, uh, the it's not quite exactly what we've done. We, you can see, we were, you know, we didn't know you were coming, and so, so don't mind the mess and everything. But I tried, the maid didn't come. So. Yeah, she was, well, it was her day off. In the beginning, when he was working, and I wasn't, I was just working a little bit, I would wait for him to come home to say, okay, let's go now, and he was too tired. You know, let's go out, let's have fun, and he was tired. And so I had to stop doing that and find other people to play with because he was, you know, too tired to play. But then when we both started working, then we were both too tired to play, so we saw each other more. This is the plant room. Yeah, there's all, you can see all the plants and everything. We try to, you know, the, the French tapestry and everything, uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, got that from it's like an 18th century tapestry from france and of course all the beautiful plants that we've collected over the years and uh, doing well because of the light yeah there's a lot of light exactly you know the most of them are are uh, need the lights yeah come up here this is the uh, the bedroom it's the bedroom and uh we use it a lot people have that thing of you know the egos get crushed because somebody's more famous and the other one's making more money or stuff like that I don't mind the fact that she's earning quite a bit more than I am. Doesn't bother me in the least. Honey, honey, honey. I'll lend you some. You know, we have everything here. Let me see a few of the items that, uh, this was, it's kind of a, kind of a funny story that goes with this. Kind of a kick. Don't tell him. Don't tell really? Don't tell him. Well, it's a wedding gift mm -hmm. from her mother and, uh, well, we just, it's, just one of the treasured possessions that we have. And oh, look, I left the towel out. Right. Well, I'll put it in the bathroom. All right, yeah. I'll, why don't we go to the bathroom? Well, I, I'd i like to be more than an actor. I'd like for people to know me more than an actor. I'd like to not only act, but write, direct, produce, and have a major part of running the government of Finland. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the bathroom. Um, it's That's the bathtub. It's, 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 <laughs> the problem is, really, uh, the plumbing has been a problem. It's, it doesn't, we can't seem to figure out where it goes. You know, that's, that's been the, uh, the major problem. Other than that, uh, as you can tell, we've got everything we could uh, want. Everything we could want here, and we're very happy. Um, I'm glad you could 
stop by and visit with us. Well, we're glad we could stop by too. A pair of near nuts with magnificent off the wall humor. But coming up is going to be an off the floor struggle, the determining event, the tug of war. Meanwhile, the football competition was absolutely sensational as we look at it again. with the sun setting on the competition, the tug of war. With that background before you, the moment of crisis at hand, I think the time is appropriate to talk to my colleagues about their views of the tug of war. Bruce Jenner, you first. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to go with Kaplan. He's got a one-man advantage. They seem to have just got in under the weight allowance of 900 pounds. They've got the momentum now. They've come off some big wins. I, I really think they can do it. All right, Juice, what about you? I agree with him. I think they have the momentum going, and I think they have that centipede effect. i never forget the first Super Teams competition when the Dodgers beat a Minnesota Vikings football team because they had more people. Uh, pulling on that rope, so they had more legs doing it, and Kaplan has more legs, but I do think Conrad has a better athlete, so it should be pretty good. I Just to clarify, six people on the Gabe Kaplan team, totaling 897 pounds, five people on the Robert Conrad team, totaling 836 pounds. One must listen to Juice closely, because you're an expert in the tug-of-war. Yeah, I saw it once and said I'd never compete in it, and I <laughs> believe me, I never will. <laughs> it's a little too grueling for you, boy. Yeah. All right, let's find out how each and every one of the contestants feels about the upcoming competition. We were a Cinderella team the last time we had this competition. We're more of a Cinderella team now, and we're going to win it. I haven't had so much fun in years. I never pulled a rope for $20,000, but uh, I'm not going to go across that side. I think Bob's team has been completely demoralized by our strength and our spirit today, and we're going to do it. We're going to win it. It's a matter of pride, and it's a matter of money. They may have the brawn, but we have a lot of heart and soul, and uh, the people are with us. Uh, and we're going to kill them. We're feeling good. And we're young, we're going to do it up, man. We're going to try like hell. I promise you that, Hard. This is what it really comes down to. We're going to give it all we got. All I can say is the Bears give me a lot of handy hints, so we're going to get them. All right! We are young. We are together. We are going to do it. This is the time. The time is now. There is no tomorrow. And if I win this, Howard, I'll have enough money to buy you a new personality. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gabe Kaplan, TV comedian, stage comedian, Erasmus Hall High School cheerleader, bus boy at a hotel, Gabe Kaplan, funny man. Desire. With me, when I was young, I always thought that I was adopted. And there's nothing wrong with being adopted, but I think if you are adopted, your parents should tell you. You know, when you're old enough to understand, they should come up to you and say, look, we love you very much, but you were adopted. But my parents never said anything. In fact, about five years ago, I asked. I went right to my father. I said, Ling Chow. <laughs> I said, was I adopted? He said, no, you're not adopted. You rented. But he has an inner sensitivity, too. I guess every entertainer, there's something about you that makes you need that laughter, applause, and acceptance. And... I, I enjoy it. I enjoy people recognizing me. I enjoy when I go into an airport, everybody coming over and saying, Mr. Cotter or Mr. Kaplan, it doesn't matter. Because they like me or, or they like something I created. And otherwise, I'd just be a guy um, uh, in a bowling alley in Brooklyn. You're a 
long way from that bowling alley in Brooklyn right now, Gabe Kaplan. You're on a beach at Malibu, and it all comes down to this. The winner of this event wins the competition, and what an event. O.J. Simpson exactly right. Too tough even for him. Instantly, look at the agony etched in the faces of all of the competitors. LeVar Burton with those teeth clenched together. The same for Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell and Robert Conrad digging in, trying to get the necessary leverage that in the ultimate determines the winner. The task to pull that loose teeth in your direction, to bring it back across the body of water into your territory, that would constitute victory. At this second, a tiny edge appears to Gabe Kaplan's team. Kurt Russell has thrown his gloves away. He is backhanded. Almost impossible under these conditions. And yet the number one man is the key man, Christy McNichol. Seems almost shocked by what's going on. Tremendous competition. The tug of war. What a unity developing between and among these team members. A splendid thing to see, really, because they don't represent their network. They weren't picked by their network, yet they're developing the kind of team feeling and togetherness that I've seen on the greatest of professional championship teams. The struggle continues, little by little. A tiny edge for Kaplan's team, but Kurt Russell, and the front man is the key man in this, more than the anchor man. Back behind Conrad, the anchor man is Big Dan Haggerty. He's in the shadows. You can't see him, but he is doing his share of the work. However, it's Russell. Look at that edge grow for Gabe Kaplan's team. You see where that little blue sheet on the rope is. And right now, Gabe Kaplan struggling to keep the leverage that so desperately needed. It's not funny now, Gabe. There's no comedic talent required here. There is only strength and stamina and balance. Digging in. And the crowd shows its excitement as it was. Look at Conrad. He seems so deep into that sand, you wonder if he can ever get out. Liz Allen behind him and on the sidelines. Each of the team members exhorting their respective teams. Tremendous competition. Look at Linda and Penny Marshall. Come on, pull, pull. That's all they can say. And they are all pulling. And still Kurt Russell amazes. Bare hand without rope. I wonder what his hands will look like tomorrow. Sheer red raw meat. There can be no other way. Now they're up, up on their feet. Kaplan's team. And they have lost ground by doing that because briefly Kaplan let go of the rope. You see, they have lost ground. You see now where the blue sheep is. Tough going. Tough going. It's all right. Tiny Edge begins to appear for Robert Conrad's team, despite the exhortations of Penny Marshall. Look at Conrad, even deeper into that stand. Kurt Russell has bitten through his lips. There is blood on his lips. And the battle continues. Ronnie Howard digging in for Kaplan's team. But the Edge now grappling. He's now fighting for survival. Wants to come out of this thing alive. But the edge is developing for Robert Conrad's team. You can see it there as Commissioner Rafer Johnson looks closely. The blue sheet over the rope gradually coming toward Kurt Russell. The number one man. There he is on Conrad's team. The blood pouring forth from the lips. Russell in his efforts has bitten through his lips. It started out as fun and games, but it's not that now as you can see. Russell up to his feet, trying to get more leverage, then back into the sand. Conrad right behind him, the same way. Each team almost desperate with fatigue, but ever so slowly that sheep moves toward Kurt Russell. Closer and closer. It's got to be one last gasp of effort from Kaplan's team if they're to have any chance in this competition. And the effort seems to be forthcoming. LeVar Burton. Run.
Ronnie Howard, Richard Hatch, all behind Kaplan, and back to the middle goes the blue sheep. So Kaplan's team is still alive, but barely. Look at Liz Allen. Look at them all back there. Call Franklin. $20,000 to each of the winners. And the whole competition at stake. Beads of perspiration dripping down from Catherine. The same true of Conrad. Early on, it appeared to be a rout for Conrad's team. But Catherine's team made a resounding comeback. But it all comes down to this. And now, again, Conrad's team pulling, pulling, pulling ever so much. Kaplan slipping forward toward the water. Now, too much rope distance between him and LaVar Burton, thus destroying the balance, the unison of the Kaplan team's effort. But Kaplan can do no more than he's doing, as you can see. And closer and closer now, Rafa Johnson hovering over that blue sheet. Kaplan desperately trying to get some strength back. But the body moves ever closer to the water. The fans, of course, excited. No, as I said, it's not fun in games. Not now. Not when you look at Kurt Russell. And not when you look at Gabe Kaplan. Too many think that the back man, the anchor man, is the king in a tug of war. Not so. It is the lead man. And there is no Robert Hedges here this time for Kaplan's team. We're about at the end, or so it seems. Johnson over the tape. Look at the bloody mouth of Russell and the agonized face of Kaplan. Close to the end. It is almost there. Kaplan already in the water. Look, look. There's Johnson. That's it. That's it. The commissioner blows his whistle. Robert Conrad's team has won the tug of war. Robert Conrad's team has won the challenge of the network star. A stirring, dramatic climax to what started out as pure fun. Kurt, I gotta ask you one question. You had your gloves oh, off. I didn't think you could hold together without those gloves. I didn't feel good with them on, so I just I told you I wasn't going on the other side. <laughs> Russell. What a story. After what he just went through, he still had the concentration to remember what he told me just prior to the event. Hey, good, Gabe. Hey, Gabe. Yeah. Gabe, I yeah. thought you were going to faint out there. Really? I almost did. He's tough. Tough. I almost did. But they were, they were a little too strong, but we, we tried. Oh, we did. He, he did a great job. Well, so did you. Congratulations Thank to you, you on your team. Thank you, What a finish. What a tug of war. It seemed almost endless. Oh, Lynch, you hung in there, baby, all the way. Oh, wow. Do you have any feeling left? None. I can't even breathe. Oh, wow. That is truly the toughest. How about you, Carl? I'm happy. I am happy. And I think we should all give a hand to Big Dan Haggerty. Thanks for that. Congratulations to you, Dan. You were the anchor man. You never wavered. Well, I couldn't go back home and face that bear if I'd have lost. And I'm glad that we won. So the challenge of the network star is his hope. It was fun, sure, but a triumph of the human spirit, too. Executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. Challenge of the network star is produced by Don by Chet Foy. Technical director, Chet Mazurik. Associate producer, Peggy Brin. Associate director, Dick Buffett. Be sure to join us this Saturday on ABC for the Pro Bowlers Tour and ABC's Wide World of Sports.